company in focus, uh, Bajaj Electrical stock uh, has done extremely well. It's up, up some 85 percent this year. Now, the board has approved a review of its corporate structure in order to unlock growth and value creation for all business segments. Uh, they say they will evaluate a full range of options and will consider uh, how, uh, you know, housing the power transmission and power distribution uh, businesses in separate entities, the consumer business separately. Anuj Podar is executive director at uh, the company at Bajaj Electricals. He's joining us right now. Mr. Podar, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, so your viewers, shareholders would want to know what exactly are you going to do? Uh, so you're undertaking this review, business reorganization, uh, but uh, what exactly and to what end? Sure. So, you know, let me make that very simple for you and the viewers. We are consolidated. We have, we comprise different businesses. Primarily, there's various consumer facing businesses and there's a power infrastructure business. For the longest time, every friend, well wisher, and advisor, and analyst has told us that why don't we split the company and separate these businesses into separate entities? So, quite simply, that is what we're doing. We'll have an entity focused on the consumer business and a separate entity focused on the power infrastructure business. The rationale for that is very clear and very compelling. If I talk from an internal business standpoint, number one, it allows for separate entities that are focused on their respective businesses. I think that unleashes energies in terms of focus. It will provide greater growth for our people. And three, most importantly, you know, these businesses require different capital allocation and fiscal management. So it allows us to run two separate balance sheets with appropriate capital allocation policies for these. If I talk from an investor perspective, you know, they've been asking for this for a long while. I do believe this will unlock value if all the internal benefits come through. Of course, it will unlock value for investors. And as well, it will allow the company to attract a wider and deeper set of investors who typically look for targeted, you know, business entities and not consolidated uh, business entities. Right. So to us, the rationale is very compelling and that is what we intend to pursue going forward. And shareholders have been waiting for this for very, very long. I think, uh, you know, the last few years that I've interviewed, the management have asked them multiple times, when is this happening? It's good to see that, uh, you know, you're moving on that path of demerger. Now, a, a couple of uh, questions that I have. Uh, you were talking about more investors, you know, the, realizing more wealth and potential of the company. Will that be a strategic investor that will be coming into any of these entities? So, you know, that's too premature to talk about. But first, let me talk about the timing issue. And, you know, like you said, whether it's yourselves in media or other, you know, investor community, they've all been asking for this for quite some time, at least since the three years that I've been around in the company. Uh, you know, we've refrained from commenting on this in the past because it's not appropriate to do that. But in our mind, we are very clear that, you know, conceptually that made sense, but the timing had to be right. And when I say timing right, we wanted to do this from a position of strength and not from a position of weakness where we felt compelled into doing this. We did have a fair amount of debt on our balance sheet. We did need to streamline businesses. In the last two or three years, we've taken multiple steps that have allowed us to almost completely pay off all our debt. Our balance, sheets are, our balance sheet is very strong right now. Our businesses are far more streamlined, processes are streamlined. We've boosted talent. And I think now the timing is good because it really gives us a platform for growing all of these businesses under separate entities. So that's really the point that I wanted to emphasize on why we're doing this at this point of time. Coming to your question on strategic investor, quite frankly, that's a very speculative and premature discussion at this stage. You know, that is not our immediate intent. Irrespective of that, I think this makes sense to do, and that's where we are approaching this from. Okay, all right. And you also mentioned uh, that your debt, uh, uh, you know, has come down drastically. What is the updated number? And uh, I, th I think it'll come down to around 200, 250 crores, if I'm not mistaken, from more than 500 crores. Uh, which that's entity, right. which, which part of the entity gets this uh, debt in their books? Post so actually, the, the way we foresee this, you know, this process of demerger takes anywhere up to nine months based on NCLT clearances, etc. Uh, our target, as we've guided below before, is to actually be debt free by March 22. So we'll be debt free long before this exercise takes shape. So that's also, you know, goes back to my point on timing that we will, both entities will have strong, you know, uh, balance sheets once we do this exercise. Okay, all right. You'll have taken, uh, you know, let's talk about business. You'll have taken three, four price hikes already, I think, this year. You'll be hinting that there's another price hike before the end of this uh, this calendar year. That's 2021. We're almost at the end. Uh, have you yes. taken one in the last, either in November or December? And if yes, could you quantify it? Well, we've not taken one so far in this quarter. I think demand has been kind of on the fence in this quarter. So we're waiting for the right time. Uh, we will do that at the appropriate time. We've been taking other measures to actually mitigate the cost side impact in our PLs, so we are looking to maintain margins. 
That said, I do want to highlight that, you know, uh, if we look at last year Q3, last year Q3, you're looking at a very, very high basis. Right? You know, it was an uh, unbelievable, outstanding quarter that we had. So one will have to temper expectation on a why on why basis on that. Having said that, on a sequential or otherwise basis, I think we should be trending well. Uh, right. I mean, Sipodar, so beyond this, how are, uh, will, is demand, uh, the visibility for demand as strong as it was earlier? Or will there be some tapering as we go into next year? No, I think, you know, I like to separate the short term from the medium term and long term. I think short term, it's very hard to predict. When I say short term, two, three months, it's hard to predict. But even the short term, I'm optimistic. I think the latest variant of COVID, while there's a certain panic, I think that's an over panic. I think that will also be subsiding soon enough in terms of the impact, the severity of the impact of that. I do think economically we should be headed into a better uh, environment over the next you know, couple of quarters. And as you start getting into March, April, May, you will yeah. see, again, last two years, we've had a low base effect. So as you, I am really optimistic that the coming summer 22 will actually be a strong summer with a you know, big growth for the last two years, which we missed out. So uh, fans, cooler businesses, et cetera. For two years, we've had a subdued right. business. So I do think in the medium term, we're looking at a good growth trend. That's some good demand trends. That is just... Anuj, you said that you all are waiting to do this sort of uh, exercise from a position of strength rather than from a position of weakness. And I recall when I chatted with you last, you all said that the EPC business will turn profitable more towards the end of the fourth quarter, or at least for FY23, it'll be profitable. Sticking to that guidance? Yes. Yes. So that's part of the rationale for doing this at this point of time. You know, we've streamlined what we needed to do. We did have some sticky projects. The sticky projects are coming towards an end, so an exponential year. Most of them will be, you know, will have flipped over from dealing more with sticky projects, will have gone down, and we'll be looking more and fresh order books from here on. Okay, final question before we let you go. I think margins, you're talking about 9% nine, 9 or thereabouts, right? Or an average? Uh, I can't give a guidance to okay. specific margin, but, you know, we should be healthy enough. What about that. revenues for this year? What do you end up with? Uh, I would, you know, hope to be in a single-digit growth on a full-year basis this year. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Bodha, we'll leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us.